Hello everyone, this is Phonographic, and I've got this new routine with drum racks. I used to set up drum racks and import samples that I want and take hours to audition different clips until I got it right while simultaneously playing things in the background. I never really could get a, a workflow that I was happy with in Ableton with drum rack until I found this. What I'll do is I'll take a drum rack and I'll drag it in to Ableton. And all these pads right here, as you know, you can uh, import a sampler or a sampler or an operator for whatever sound you want to trigger when you hit C1 or A1, and so on. So I'll drag in a sampler into, let's do the first four tracks. This is for a demonstration. So I have four samplers, and I'll open up the macros. And mind you, you don't have to set the macros the way that I do. This is just uh, visually easier for me. Uh, once I have the four, I'll double click on the first sampler. And what I have here, you drop your sample here window. I'm going to go ahead and take some samples that I recently acquired from, uh, how obvious is this, drumsamples.org, right? This cat uploaded a bunch, uh, well, a thousand. <laughs> a thousand drum samples for you to fuck with. Um, who knows the legality of them, but who cares, right? You can download that, and um, I think I have the folder open here. Right, okay. So inside of this zip file, it gives you all sorts of drums. Now, let's do bass drums for our first, right? You gotta keep in mind that with Drum Rack, uh, Drum Rack can only host up to 128 only. What am, what am I saying? Um, but it's true, it, it does have a limit at 128, but really, why you would need more than 128 drum samples to audition is beyond me. If you can't live with 128, then just double it up. You know, make another drum rack so you'll have 256 and then you can waste even more time trying to find the perfect sample. But if, if you can't find it within 128, then uh, I, I don't know. But for this tutorial, I'll take 1 through 50 in this folder and I'll shift click to select them all. And then I'll drag them into, well, where Ableton tells me to drop my samples. So it's got 50 that I just dragged in from the folder. So after you have that, you want to click on the Zone tab. The Zone tab, uh, I, won't, I won't waste your time explaining in great detail what it is, but uh, simply think of all 50 of these samples. The zone is which note will trigger. Uh, by default, all, all of these samples are going to trigger when you play a note. So, you know, I'll just uh, arm this track, and and that's all. That's all 50, 50 of the bass drums <laughs> playing at once, which. It's kind of silly. If you're trying to layer claps or snares or silly sound effects, you know, then then it's perfectly perfectly reasonable to have all of them triggered by one. But for what we want to do, uh, by default, it's going to be a key. But I'm going to go to the selection mode, and all of these are already selected. If I select one, I can just Command A, and it'll allow me to select them all. And once they're all selected, I will right click and select distribute ranges equally. Look at that. Now it's spread, uh, well, somewhat equally over your MIDI controller. One thing that I haven't really figured out is why Ableton will take, say, the first, I don't know, 30 some, and it'll, it'll be in smaller increments, but then you'll see towards the end, you got bigger chunks, uh, you know, towards, towards the end. 
Uh, keep in mind that the 0 to 127, that, that would be on a, uh, a MIDI controller. So if you were to hit uh, C0 all the way to C5, you know, that's the range that you have for, what is that, the first 60, yeah, the first 60 notes. But that doesn't matter right now. Um, so once they're distributed equally, this orange box right here, if you click this and drag it around, this is your selector, hence the selector menu. And what this is, is that it'll, it'll take wherever you line, let's say if you line it up to 32, that means that it's going to play this note right here, which is on the 32. However, if you drag it back and then you right click, uh, normally your first intuition would be to map to macro 1. However, I like to map to macro 5 because this is in line with this again visually that's just kind of how my brain works so I'm gonna map it to macro 5 and now you'll notice that with this macro when you modulate it it's going to move your selector thus when you play a note through MIDI uh, I'm going to take this and with my APC 40 that will control macro 5 here, you'll notice that as I play this note and twiddle the fifth macro, it allows me to cycle through all of those. Uh, maybe with a bass drum, that's not the best example, sonically. That is. So let's go to part two with adding a snare drum. So inside of the 1000 free drum samples folder, I'll take snare one through 50 and drag them into the sampler on the second pad. So 50 and 50 are selected. And we'll do the same thing in the zone tab. You're going to go to select, and being as that all these are already selected, I'll right click and distribute that shit equally. And then I'll take the selector and map it to macro 6. So now, macro, macro 6, when twiddled, will select your equally distributed ranges. And then it's just a matter of finding that perfect snare drum. And that's the gist of it. What I like to do is save this drum rack. Uh, once I load them up with, say, 16 of the exact same thing that we just did, uh, the only difference being with bass drum, snare drum, hi-hat, hi-hat, open, <clears throat> crash cymbal, sound effects, so on. I'll take that and I'll save it as a default live set. You know, just save it. And then you can just drag in, or I'm sorry, rather take this drum rack and save this as a... Uh, you know, just a reference patch that you can open up in any of your projects. And once you have your your samples or your uh, MIDI pads, MIDI instruments playing, you can just take this drum rack and then audition with whatever you want to play on it. Also, as a closing note, I know some of y'all are looking at the APC like, what the fuck is this guy? You know, this is what the APC looks like to me. This, uh, I'll throw a link on the end of this. This is a MIDI script that I've already jaw dragged about quite a bit called APC 6440. This is a remote script made by uh, a cat by the name of Hans Petrov. And what it is, briefly, is uh, it gives you some other modes holding the shift and track selection one through master. 
and this will give you the ability to play MIDI notes through the APC. Uh, the feature that, you know, for everything that's great about the APC, it was something that I always, always wanted. Something as simple as, you know, just being able to play a MIDI note into an instrument. To audition it or to play one-shot samples, whatever. You know, stupid shit like that. That's what's great about the APC 6440. And it's got different modes. Uh, you'll notice that this matrix will change colors as I switch and the only difference between all of these is that these MIDI notes that give you, you know, different LEDs and different patterns, these are just different scales. So, for example, three will be uh, your straight linear one through four. And then it'll start again over here. Mode four will be all the way across, you know, row by row. And then you can go into... Uh, different scales, diatonic scales, I forget what this is, um, but really you can just kind of get the gist of it after playing with it for a little while. Something to take note of though, for this example, I use four because this will give me a uh, drum rack over here, channels one through eight, it'll give it to me all in this bottom row. Uh, the one last thing to keep in mind is that the APC40 for all of its flex, it does not have velocity sensitive pads, to which a lot of y'all are rolling your eyes, but you know, for, for basic drum programming, that's that's fine. You can go back in and edit your velocities however you want. And that's it. That's that's the uh, that is the well shit, I d I don't have a name for, for this method. Maybe maybe y'all could help me come up with a name, but Thank you for watching, and please enjoy all that time that you're going to save with uh, your drum rack. So now let's Thanks. go ahead and talk about how to get some samples. Get some samples. Get some samples. It's fascinating. I guess maybe... I guess maybe it's fascinating. I guess maybe it's the dreamer in me. Like this $30,000 Farlight CMI synthesizer.